of you old time Bethesda people. Irene Becker was called home to eternal life this last week. So keep her family in your prayers. Uh, I understand that she's been here for how many years? Years and years and years. Played the organ for a long time. For a long time. So you know, keep keep her in, in your prayers. Keep her family in your prayers. Uh, Pastor, will there be services? Uh, will not be. We're thinking of for the 18th of the month. Her family's out of town taking care of business and stuff. So probably not until then. Well, we'll find out this next week. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Every time Pastor would pray for her, I'd get a smile on my face because it reminded me of my Sunday school teacher back in Oneida. And I go, wow, if she's like that, I mean, she's a blessing to the church. It is just connected. Any announcements for us today? Yeah. Vacancy. You're now in it. And uh, in inside the worship folder, you have an, uh, a survey that deals with the next pastor. So please take time to fill that up, what you might think as needs for the next pastor, what you would like to see and so forth. Please fill that out. And Bill, do we have a place to put on or just drop them off at the front office? Okay. Just get them back here. You have this next week and the week after. We'll also have somewhere along the line in the next week or so uh, a sheet that if you have a pastor in mind that you think might be a good fit here for Bethesda, uh, you can place his name in. We'll send that name off to the district. Might come back as one of the members or one of the people to be called, might not. But at least you have an opportunity to give a name of someone you might know who might make a good pastor here for Bethesda. Uh, I'm here, no, I have Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, morning hours, but I'm here for vacancies. Can't make hospital calls, can't take nursing home, but I'm here anyway. So just give me a call, phone number's there, or call the office, and, and they will try to get a hold of me somehow. Names, I've only been here for a while, so I don't know all your names yet. So remind me if need be. Welcome to all of our visitors, by the way. I see a couple of them dragging in now. I can say that because they're my nephews. <laughs> it's the Merrill family reunion this weekend here, and I'm the only Merrill here. Uh, uh, there are five. I'm the baby of the family. One of my sisters passed last year. Uh, the other one, Nancy, is up in the state home. My two brothers just couldn't make it, so here I am. And back there, we have a couple pews of people. Uh, so, welcome to you all. Yeah, cool welcome. Um, next week, Lord willing, we're going to start a Bible study. It's called a CDB Bible study. What's that mean? Well, it's coffee, donuts, and Bible study. You know, the three best things we can have on Sunday morning outside of worship. You know? So it'll be down in the fellowship hall. We'll try to set the tables up so that we can do the social distancing and so forth down the line, but wear masks if need be and so forth. We're going to study the book of Mark, the Gospel of St. Mark. So plan on that. We'll, we'll get that done. Any other announcements? Our worship service for this morning is from Divine Service Setting 4, and that's on page 203. We begin with the opening.
his mic on. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this mic. <laughs> service is Divine Setting Service 4, page 203, and we stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? The Lord be your gracious gracious. Therefore, you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, we call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn to the intro as printed in your worship folder, the insert, and we parse this by half verse. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To the same grace is your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love in the morning. And your faithfulness by night. To the music of the lute and the harp. To the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. And the works of your hands I sing for joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. How great are your works, O Lord! Your Lord God's Accomplish 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for this 14th Sunday after the Pentecost is from the prophet Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. <clears throat> So to you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked none, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle from Romans, the 13th chapter. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, Whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. Respect to whom respect is owed. Honor to whom honor is owed. Owe one, no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love those does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the Alleluia verse and reading of the Holy Gospel. came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptation to sin. It is necessary that temptation come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame then with two hands or two feet to be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye 
than of two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountain and go and search for the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than the other ninety-nine that were never went, that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. And I'm going to ask, I see we have a couple children out there. If you would like to come ahead up here, children, I might have a little message for you. Mattis, you want to come on up here? <laughs> he's trying to tell me he's not really doing it. No, come on. Come on. You're going to help me. Come on, Mattis. Bring your mom along with you. Yeah. He's all right. No. <laughs> he's kind of independent, isn't he? Have a seat right there. Yeah. I brought something with me today. I think you probably know what this is. What is that? Bottle of water. Madison, you know what this is? Is that a bottle of water? Oh, no. yeah, but I don't want those glasses. <laughs> you know, is water any good? Yeah. Is it why? What? Why is it good? <laughs> you know, well, I'm going to tell you that. Boy, it's a good thing you're here, right? <laughs> Maybe mom and dad will listen to it. Huh? Well, that's questionable. <laughs> water is more important than food. You know that? More important than food. Isn't that something? We can go for days, days, without eating. But we can't go for days without water. It's that important. So we say water really is the liquid of life. You have to have water. You know who else said something about water? Who do you think said something else about water? A guy by the name of Jesus. He says, I am the living water. Drink of me, and you shall live. So it's important also that we hear God's word, that we listen to Jesus. For when we listen to him, we drink from living water. This water lasts for a lifetime. He lasts for eternal life. I want you to remember that, okay? So every time you get a bottle of water, you think, oh, this is good stuff. I got even better stuff. I've got Jesus. All right? Okay? Well, you know, I want to thank you for coming out here. I got something else for you. See? I told you, kids. You should have come up. <laughs> I have this little thing. It's called a sucker tree. Mattis, come on over here. Do you like suckers? Huh? You want to choose a sucker off the sucker tree?
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. May we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, open our ears to hear, our minds to understand, and our hearts to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, as Scripture tells us it is the Word of Life. Amen. It was September 1964. The first day of classes at Concordia Teachers College, Seward, Nebraska, and I was an incoming freshman student. My first day of classes at college this is my first class, too. We're in the basement of Weller Hall for a class on literature, speech, something of that nature. And the students were there, all the girls actually sitting up in front, guys scattered about, I was in the back. About as far as I could get. In walked the professor, about six foot five, 300 pounds, a look about him that said, Don't mess with me. <laughs> put his briefcase down, took out his notes, put them on the podium, leaned out on the podium, looked out at the classroom, looked about at every student there in the eye, just looked. And I remember to this day with clarity the first words spoken in the first class, first day of my college career. Well, what do you want to talk about today? <laughs> this guy wasn't going to open his mouth for anything, and no one else did. So the professor went on. You know, there are only three topics worth talking about politics. Religion and sex. <laughs> this is election year, he said, so we're not going to talk about politics. You're in a Christian school. You're going to get enough religion, so let's talk about sex. <laughs> <laughs> I could see the color in the room changing. <laughs> like to blush. <laughs> the late girls up in front were just, oh. I'm sitting in the back thinking, this is going to be an interesting class. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want to talk about today? No, we're not going to talk about sex. Let's get that out of your mind. We're going to talk about law and gospel, sin and grace, under the topic of, is God serious about sin? Is God serious about sin? <laughs> And I'm going to kind of touch on all three of the lessons for today. Uh, not deeply, because that's about 20 hours of sermon, and I think I only got about an hour here. Well, no, it's not that long. The text from Ezekiel is a rather unique text. Uh, the words of this text today, in chapter 33, were also spoken earlier in Ezekiel, in chapter 3. The exact words. God's people, the Israelites, we're just, well, they're not heads. The first one was before they were taken into captivity. The last one was you know, kind of toward the end, and they were going to go back, you might say. They had abandoned God's covenant that he had established with them. They lived in disobedience to his word. They took to themselves the gods of the people around them, which they were supposed to have wiped out in the first place and got rid of all the gods with. They adopted them in. Some are even offering their children unto the hot arms of Moloch as a sacrifice. They were no longer offering sacrifices acceptable to God. The priests were not shepherding the people as they were charged to do, but they were leading them away from the word of God to myths, to tales of their own. So God appointed people called prophets. These are not priests. They were just people that God raised up and called to go to his people to call them back from their sin, to warn them. And Ezekiel was one of these prophets that God appointed. He called him, God called him a watchman. A watchman is one who stands up on the rampart and looks out looking for something that may come. He was appointed to guard, to warn people of impending danger. So Ezekiel was there to Go and tell the Israelites 
of the impending danger caused by their sin. Furthermore, God told Ezekiel, if he failed to warn them, failed to speak out against the sin that they were doing, the wicked man would die. Not just die, but that wicked man would go to hell. And Ezekiel would be held accountable for his death. But if he does tell him, and the wicked man still sins, the wicked man dies, but at least Ezekiel would be saved. So Ezekiel went out prophesied. Well, it's not a popular message. And Israel did not listen. So the Babylonians came in. Killed. Just killed. Ruined the country. Tore it apart. Tore down the walls of the city. Tore down the temple. The place of worship for God's people. Tore it down. Destroyed it. Flat. Is God serious about sin? How about, how about our nation? Our nation that has the motto of one nation under God. Have we listened to God's warning? What gods are we worshiping? Our politicians in this election year. Our politicians who promise us everything, <coughs> promise to save us. We have a savior, we don't need another. How about the movie stars? Professional footballs, hockey, all those sports people. How do we justify? How do we justify sacrificing our unborn upon the altar of choice or convenience? Is God serious about sin? The epistle reading from Romans is one every Christian of this day and age to take to heart. I'm not going to say much about it, except to ask you to read it, once again, maybe throughout the word, read it every day and meditate on it. This is God's word to us, his people. And how should we deal with those whom he has placed in authority? So I'm just asking you to read it. I'm asking you to pray for those in authority. Now, God, get rid of that guy. Pray for those who are in authority. Pray that God would use them to be instruments of good in this nation. Pray that we may lead peaceable lives and be one nation under God. The true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then let's turn our attention to the gospel. Oh man, about five or six hours of sermons there, right? Or more. I only want to touch on a couple of the topics that were in there. First is children. Children, well, they're precious in the sight of God. As Jesus said in the text, it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. That means he does not want any of them to miss heaven. Earlier, Jesus had said, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung about his neck and be tossed the depths of the sea drown. That's why we must be willing to welcome parents with children to our worship services. Oh, sure. Those children make noise. They scream, they fuss, they cry. <clears throat> you ever thought of maybe going over and helping that young parent? You know, parents, adults, you make noise too, you know that? Yeah. How are we to train a child if they are not in worship, if they're not in the presence of the Word of God? That's why we have Sunday school. That's why we have a day school. In those agencies, we can bring them up in the discipline and in instruction of the Lord as God tells us. We cannot neglect bringing our children into the knowledge of the grace of God. We just cannot. Is God serious about sin? Well, take a look at it further in Matthew. Woe to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptations come. <clears throat> if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands and two feet.
to be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out, throw it away. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than two eyes and be thrown into the hell of fire. Now, don't get your knives out and start slicing. That's not what God wants. He doesn't want you to maim yourself. He's using gross exaggeration to let you know how serious sin really is. It separates us from God. And if we're separated from God, you know what's going to happen? We're going to hell. Separated from God. Ooh. So what's the answer? Well, Jesus gave us that answer, too. Gave it to us on the Sermon on the Mount. Be perfect. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Well, we know how well that's going to work out, don't we? I can guarantee you that every one of you is going to sin before you leave this building, either thought, word, or deed. We're conceived in sin. We're born in sin. We sin daily. We revel in it sometimes. Sin is serious. Is God serious about sin? Yes. And knowing that we, we cannot do anything about it, he took action. Grace. Grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. Right there, the beginning. Right there in the Garden of Eden. There was Adam and Eve naked with shame. And Satan probably strutting around saying, Oh, I got these guys. Now I'm in control. Sin and death reign." God spoke. Right? To Satan. I will put enmity between you and the woman. Between her seed and your seed, he will crush your head, but you will bruise his heel. Right there. In the darkness of the first sin. When the sinless creation of God, Adam and Eve, separated themselves from God, here comes God with his grace shining. The word of promise of a Savior, a Redeemer, one who would be the atonement. Words were spoken. The Old Testament is his story. It is Jesus' story. It is the story of the coming of a Savior, Jesus the Christ. Time and time again, people would rebel and go against God. <coughs> But God remained faithful, <coughs> faithful to his promise. The seed of the woman will crush your head. Satan, you will be defeated. I will restore, God said. I will forgive. I will pay the price. And then, in the little town of Nazareth, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the very conceived the Son of God. It was there, not at Bethlehem, but there at Nazareth, that the Son of God, the Son of Man, filled this world, came into this world. He came with a purpose. While he was a great teacher, a great preacher, a great healer, a miracle worker, he had a higher purpose. He came to save. He came to crush the head of Satan. He came to win us back, to buy us back sin, death, and the power of Satan. Is God serious about sin? Most certainly. Not only serious enough to warn us, but to give his son as the atoning sacrifice for sin. My sin, your sin, the sin of the whole world. That's grace. That's God's riches at Christ's expense. We can't buy it. We can't earn it. We do not deserve it. But because of God's love for us, he sent his son to go to the cross to die for us. The blood of Christ, the blood of the Son of God, shed on that cross, covers our sin. And makes us righteous before God. As God the Father looks at us, He looks at us through the cross, through the blood shed there, and it makes us clean, it makes us His children. Because of Jesus, 
we are no longer separated from God. Life eternal is ours. Thanks be to God. Now go and tell someone else. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand for prayer. Blessed Lord, you have promised that where two or three are gathered your name in your name, you are in the midst of them. Hear the prayers of your people and grant our supplications. O oh Lord, grant to your people courage, that with boldness we may speak your name and witness and warn sinners, so that they may come to faith and repentance, and so enjoy the forgiveness of their sins. Give your church wisdom and strength by your spirit, that she may be steadfast and unmovable in your word and truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, be present among your people to serve us with the gifts of your grace and grant that we may receive them with joy. Give to us faithful pastors and church workers who will minister to us in your name and strengthen our faith and life together as your baptized people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, give to us good and honest leaders who will govern, govern according to your word and will. Give us grace that we may not fail to pray for those who lead us and to act as good citizens and good neighbors to one another. Give peace to the nation and bring an end to violence, prejudice, and racism. Guide us to know and respect all life, from the infant in the womb to the youth beginning maturity and from the mature to the good. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you send rain upon the earth and turn seeds into plants rich with fruit for harvest. Accept our thanks and praise for your continued goodness in providing for us food in the field, harvest, that we might enjoy the gifts you've given. Give us wisdom so that we may use your resources wisely and extend your care to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh Lord, you urge us to give special care and guidance to the young and to those new in the faith. Give us grace that we may not lead them into temptation or sin, but guard their faith by making them know, making known to them the full counsel of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh Lord, you gather us together as a family here at Bethesda. And we ask that you be with these, our family members, this week. And we pray especially for uh, Anthony Phillips, for Della Schmidt, Patrick, Paula, Brianna, Samantha, and Abigail Foley. Lord, We'd ask that you would give to them your grace and peace, and that whatever they need at this time, give to them as well. Bless them in what they do, that it may be to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Well, Lord, you are the strength of the weak, the healing of the sick, the comfort of those who grieve, and peace of those who near death. Hear us on behalf of those who have requested prayers from us. We pray for Ella, Ella, Jody, for Pastor Art, for Steve, Della. Ken, Zoe, for Mary Ann, Herb, Betty, Vi, for Merle, and Shell, and Sue, and Elaine, Heine. Lord, the needs are great, so we include as well those we name this time in our heart. May they be sustained in their affliction, comforted in life and death, and delivered to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you are the peace and comfort giver, and we ask that you be with the family of Irene Becker as they mourn her passing. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh Lord, you have given the day for work and the night for rest. Bless all honest labor and industry, artists and artisans, and those in caring for the professions. Keep us in humility. Guard us against pride and arrogance. Give to us a spirit of generosity that we may share with others the blessings that flow from our labors. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh Lord, you have appointed us to be your disciples here on this earth, to bring your saving word to the nations. We ask you to bless the efforts to bring that word to Pine Ridge, that they may know your saving grace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh Lord, deliver us from pandemic and pestilence, from disaster and danger. 
from a sudden death, but keep, keep in faith that we may be preserved through this mortal life and in death be received into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear us, O Lord, who cry to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have called us to be your people. You have united us under the confession of faith that we say now, the Apostles' Creed given to us, and it's on page 207. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, be with us this day and every day throughout this week, that we might be your people, giving your name, praise, and glory, and honor wherever we might be, that others might know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Have any birthdays today? This week? Wow, yes. Hey. One day. You're going to be three. Wow, I remember that. No, I don't. <laughs> I remember being two, though. My first memory. My two sisters <laughs> took me to the barber, held me in the chair, screaming and kicking me as he cut my long curls off. Uh, any other birthdays? Matt, you want to come here and dance with me as they sing happy birthday to you? Huh? No. <laughs> Let's sing happy birthday to Mass. You have to get me going. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. close with the last hymn. <laughs>
God's blessing to you. Go and share Jesus.